After nearly two decades of relative peace and prosperity under King Robert Baratheon, first of his name, the realms of Westeros prepared for war. After the rebellion and victory against Mad King Aerys Targaryen, King Robert Baratheon maintained peace in the Seven Kingdoms through a combination of martial strength and a series of alliances with some of the major houses of Westeros. And while this secured many years of peace, King Robert disappointed many during his reign. Though no one disputed his skills as a warrior, as a king, he gave himself to drink and borrowed massive sums of coin with little to no oversight over the day-to-day -day operations of the kingdom. Instead, he left the work to his friend and mentor John Aaron as Hand of the King, the second most powerful man in Westeros. Yet in leaving one man to do the work of two, John Aaron became overwhelmed, unable to rein in the lavish spending of the king or possible corruptions in the government. As a result, while the realm prospered during these years, the seeds of destruction were also planted. The Seven Kingdoms became divided with factions growing in secret, dangerous and ambitious men who saw a disinterested king along with his young and neglected heir and made their own plans for the succession. All it would take was a single act to throw the continent into chaos, and this act came in the mysterious death of Hand of the King, John Aaron. Eddard Stark, the Lord of Winterfell, was chosen to replace him, with King Robert traveling personally to the north to bring his old friend back with him to the capital city of King's Landing. He also proposed Poses a marriage between his son and heir, Joffrey Baratheon, and Eddard's eldest daughter, Sansa Stark. Lord Stark, along with his daughters Arya and Sansa, leave for the south, while his wife Catelyn and sons Rob, Bran, and Rickon remain behind in Winterfell, with Bran unconscious, recovering from a fall which occurred while climbing the towers of Winterfell. Jon Snow, Lord Stark's bastard son with an unknown woman, left Winterfell as well, but headed in the opposite direction, north towards the Wall. As an illegitimate child, Jon had no real prospects for the future, and so decided to pledge his life and death to the Night's Watch, an order of men who guard the realms of men from threats in the far north, such as wildling tribesmen, and if the stories are true, monsters, giants, and demon ice lords. Lord Stark settled into his role as Hand of the King with the goal of discovering the true cause of Jon Arryn's death, with Catelyn's sister Lysa Arryn, widow to the deceased Hand, having written a letter suggesting foul play and warning of the possible involvement of House Lannister. Through an investigation, he discovers what he believes to be the true cause of Jon Arryn's death, information. He learns that the children of King Robert and Queen Cersei Lannister are not truly of the Baratheon line. Instead, they are the bastard-born children of incest between the Queen and her brother, Lord Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Jaime Lannister. Meanwhile, back in Winterfell, Bran remains in a coma. After a fire is started in the fortress as a distraction, an assassin makes an attempt on his life. But Bran is saved by his mother and his direwolf, Summer, who rescue him. Lady Catelyn becomes convinced her son was pushed from that tower and travels south with the blade of the assassin to find her husband and bring justice to those threatening her family. After a conversation with her old friend, Peter Baelish, she suspects Tyrion Lannister of hiring the assassin. She runs into him at the cross Roads in and has him arrested. She takes him into custody and marches him to the Vale of Arryn, where he is to be tried by Catelyn's sister, Lysa Arryn. Yet Tyrion demands trial by combat and is saved by a sellsword named Bronn, who steps in on his behalf. Though Tyrion is freed, his arrest sends shockwaves throughout the kingdom, resulting in Jaime Lannister confronting Ned in the streets of King's Landing, injuring him, and then fleeing from the city. In response to this and the raiding of Riverland villages by Lannister troops, Lord Stark sends Beric Dondarrion and a small royal army to arrest the Lannister bannerman Gregor Clegane and bring Tywin Lannister to King's Landing to answer for the crimes of his men. With war now brewing, Ned goes to Cersei and warns her, stating he knows the truth and demanding she leave the capital with her children, lest they die in Robert's wrath. But she refuses to submit. To Lord Stark's surprise and disappointment, his friend, King Robert Baratheon, becomes gravely injured in a hunting expedition before he can learn the truth of his children. And so Lord Stark, unwilling to burden the king in his final moments, keeps the information to himself, instead arranging to take the Iron throne by force after the king's death in the name of the rightful heir. Ned makes a deal with the Master of Coin, Peter Baelish, and Jan O'Slint, captain of the city guard, who both agree to support him. Upon the death of King Robert Baratheon, his son, Joffrey, is crowned king. Lord Stark, being a man of honor, refuses to kneel and announces that it is Stannis Baratheon, the eldest brother of Robert, who is the true heir to the throne. At this moment, Lord Stark is betrayed by Peter Baelish and the city guard. Lord Stark's men are all killed, and he is taken into custody. His eldest daughter, Sansa, 
Sansa, still betrothed to King Joffrey, is held as a hostage, while his other daughter Arya manages to escape the Red Keep. Lord Varys, the Master of Whisperers, convinces Ned Stark to openly admit he lied about the King's parentage, and in return, the King would spare his daughters and allow him to avoid execution and join his son John at the Night's Watch. Lord Eddard agrees, but only to protect his loved ones. Lord Stark keeps his end of the bargain, but rather than receive mercy, King Joffrey demands he be beheaded. When Robb Stark, his eldest son, learns of his father's arrest, he calls the Bannermen of the North and marches his men south to rain destruction upon those who threaten his father. He proves himself an able commander and wins the respect of his men, so much that after the death of Lord Stark, they call for the North to be freed from the yoke of Southern oppression and declare Robb Stark king in the north. Meanwhile, we learn that both brothers Stannis and Renly Baratheon are claiming the kingdom for themselves, four kings suddenly vying for control of the Iron Throne and independence. And to further complicate matters, summer will soon end and winter is coming.